Hi everybody, welcome. <laughs> Long time no see. Uh, sorry it's been a while since I've posted anything. Um, can you hear me and see me okay out there? Um, yeah, I wanted to let you know that, um, <laughs> hi, it's nice to see so many friendly comments. Yeah, it's been a long time. I have kind of had my hands full with my online school and uh, keep meaning to put out YouTube videos and <laughs> I haven't done it yet. So I thought, why don't I use my my live setup to, um, to sort of do a lesson live? Why not? So, um, yeah, welcome everybody. So basically what I want to talk about is... You know, let's see. Actually, I think I'm going to switch back to my desk over here for now. Hang on. I forgot how to do that. There we go. I got all these buttons. So, today, I want to do a lesson live. And, um, <laughs> I kind of, uh, wow, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. This is kind of fun. Yes, it will be posted after Castlemania. Um, so, I want to do a lesson today about chords in a key but also the idea of kind of what it means to be in a key. And um, part of the reason I want to ta tackle that is I feel like um, it's a really important concept for music theory, but also for being a guitar player and um, can also be a really fun way to just be creative and have some fun. So um, yeah, hi Isaac, welcome. So I think what I want to start with is just talking about um, Let's do this. Whew, I'm a little nervous. I'm kind of excited. Uh, nervous and excited. So I already have a lesson out there about the major scale formula. So I'm going to go through it kind of as a little review. But essentially, the major scale formula is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And from just this weird little formula, we can get so, so much info out of it. Cool name, one, two, three, yes, this is beginner friendly. Hi, Tim. So, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. This is the major scale formula, and I just kind of want to write it out linearly first, and then we'll put it on guitar in a minute here. So, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So what we have here is a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So let me sneak back over to my, my camera guitar here and we'll, we'll, uh, you know, this is all live, live transitions. So we're not, uh, <laughs> it takes me a second to get around here. Oh, but I do want to turn this button off. There we go. Okay. So, um, what we've got here is it's a little small. I'm gonna play it on guitar. We got a C right here, and then we go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Kind of cool, right? Um, you can also play it like this. Right, kind of cool. Um, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C is C, and then we go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, this is where things get really cool. So, woo, this is exciting. I'm a little nervous, I'm not going to lie, because I just went live to all of my subscribers. It's kind of scary, but I'm doing it anyway. It's fun. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Kind of a wonky circle here, and we've got whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So we're going to get some really cool information out of this and it's going to be, it's going to be freaking killer. So, um, what we need to know here is from C to E, in other words, two whole steps equals what's called a major third. And then from E to G is a half step and a whole step, which is, um, called a minor third. So half whole equals minor third. Pretty cool, right? So to make a C major chord, we take the first, third, and fifth note of a major scale, and 
we get a C major chord. And when you strum a C chord, hi everybody. Um, when we get, uh, this is why a C chord is a C chord, because to make a major chord, a major triad specifically, a triad is a kind of chord that only uses three notes. So a major triad starts with a major third, which we can also use by just saying capital M. Minor third is a little lowercase m. So M3, capital M, lowercase m3. Major third, minor third is um, a triad. And what it is is we go root, third, fifth. So this might be stuff you already know cool, fun, right? You already know this stuff. By the way, I see that people are asking some questions and I think um, I think it might be fun to scroll through and come back and answer some questions later. Um, depending on, let's see how many people are here right now. Oh my goodness, 157 people. I might not be able to answer 157 questions today, but I can probably get through a few. So um, let's go back in here. So if we've got Let's just examine this a little closer. A major triad is root, third, and fifth. Um, and the distance from root to third is a major third, which is what we did from C to E. And then the distance from the third to the fifth is a minor third, which we did from E to G. So this is where things get really cool. If we erase this highlight here and we just see what happens if we grab the second note of the scale well if we grab the second fourth and sixth note of the scale we get something kind of cool we get d f and a and if you notice for the distance from d to f is whole step half step the distance from F to A is whole step, whole step. So this is actually is a chord, D, F, and A. It's a D minor chord. So wild, this is kind of cool. Um, interesting. So what we have here is a major triad, starts from a note, moves a major third to what is called the third of the chord, and then it moves a minor third to the fifth of the chord. A minor triad, it does the opposite. It starts on root, it moves, oops, I switched pens on accident. It moves a minor third to the third of the chord, and then it moves a major third to the fifth of the chord. Kind of cool. So what we have here is major triads and minor triads, C, E, G is a major triad, and D, F, A is a minor triad. Cool, major and minor. So it turns out that we can kind of, um, we can actually map out each chord. So if we start on each note of the scale, C, D, E, F, what am I doing here? I don't know, G, A, and B. If we take every other note of the scale, C, E, G, this ends up being a major triad, which is super cool. If we take D, F, and A, this ends up being a minor triad, which is also super cool. And then if we do this with E, and let's do each of them together. Also, wow, this is really exciting. Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm surprisingly <laughs> shaky, but really fun. Um, yeah, so Jordan Young, you asked a fantastic question, what to do with music theory, and I will get there, I promise, but what we're going to do is we're going to start on E, and then we're going to move, uh, we're going to skip a note of the scale, so that's a minor third, and then we skip a note from there, and that's a major third, so it turns out, if we play E, G, and B, we get another minor triad, and then if we do the same thing for F here, oh, and then this is where we'll have a lot of fun. F, A, and C. So what I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm taking every other note of the scale. Um, to make triads, they're stacks of thirds. 
And it turns out every other note of a major scale is a third away from the next note. So D to F is a minor third, E to G is a minor third, F to A is a major third. So we can just stack these things up and they become triads. So F, A, and C is a major triad. How cool. So, so far we've got C, E, G. Oh, you can't see, sorry. So far we've got, we've got C, E, G is the, the, the first chord. Then we got D minor. Then we got E minor. And then we've got F major. Now, if we grab G, B, and D, we start on the fifth note of the scale here. G, B, D, we get, uh, well, let's see, G to B, that's a whole step and a whole step, that's a major third, and then B to D, that's a half step and a whole step, sorry, I kind of covered that up, so that would make it a major triad, because remember, root to third, major third, and then the third to the fifth being a minor third. This language, I know this language kind of is weird, and it's important to remember when we're talking about thirds, which is basically the distance from one note to another, it's a third. And then when we're labeling parts of a chord, it's the root and the third and the fifth of the chord. Kind of weird, kind of wonky. Um, also, I promise I will I will give you some ways to have fun with this, this information and tinker with it. So let's, we already figured out this one is major. And by the way, this is why in open position, this is a G chord because G, B, and D make, make a G major chord. Kind of cool. And then uh, let's go to the sixth note of the scale, A, C, and E. So what we have here is from A to C, it's a whole half, so that would be a minor third. And then from C to E, we already know that's two whole steps, that's a major third. So we've got this uh, A, C, and E, which is a minor triad. Very cool. Now, with B, we get something weird. We get B to D, that's half whole. And then we get D to F, that's also whole half. So that's two minor thirds. Now we gotta talk about a new kind of triad, a diminished triad. And that one is minor third, minor third. So we got root to third is a minor third and third to fifth is a minor third. And the reason you don't see these very often is it's actually kind of hard to figure out how to play. Let's see. There's a B and an F. There's a D, there's another B. It's a, uh, oh, where did, where'd my D go? It's kind of a wonky chord. Ted C, you got it. Yeah, pretty awesome. So here's the wild thing. Here's a really wild thing. If, I'm actually gonna go straight into iPad mode for a second here. If we just replace these with numbers, so now I'm going one, two, let's go three, let's check out four, and I'll just erase these all together like this, so we got five, six, seven. Well, this represents any major scale, any major scale. And the cool thing about this little, this little thing right here, which I'll, I'll talk about, um, is that all of that math that we figured out that was really complicated for the C major scale, it turns out that information applies to every major scale. Let's, let's look at that. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So before here we had C, D, E, F, right? But because the definition of a major scale is that we use this formula, that means the information that we learned about these chords is gonna be the same for every scale. Um, and there's a shortcut for it. Oh, I forgot to mention this is a diminished triad. 
So what, what we figured out is C, since we've used a C major scale, um, I wish I could go back now. I regret erasing that. So <laughs> since we used a C major scale to figure out all these chords, um, all of these chords are in the key of C major. In other words, what it means to be in a key is that we've chosen a scale and then we are making stuff using only that scale. So um, with all these chords, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then B diminished, um, and then back to C. All of these chords are chords in the key of C major. And that means um, we could write a little chord progression. Uh, let's see. So my, my notes were a little funky there, but I did a C chord, I did an A minor chord, I did an E minor chord, and I did an F chord. Kind of cool. So why did I put this little I up here? Because this information, um, because this applies to every major scale, we've got a nice little shortcut here where we can just label the chords, the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, five chord, six chord, and seven chord. Now here is the cool thing. Um, what we have here is this nice little cheat code where uppercase means major and lowercase means minor. So when you look at these three chords, even if you don't know what key we're in, um, you've got the one chord must be major because it's uppercase. The two chord must be minor because it's lowercase. The three chord must be minor because it's lowercase. So um, this is pretty cool. I'm actually going to, oh, I've got a whole new sheet I can do right here. So where am I going with this? So I've already actually uploaded a video to YouTube about chords in a key. Uh, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diner, if you want to watch that one. I think it's called Chords in a Key. But I didn't explain any of this stuff. And I didn't talk, I don't think I talked about the Roman numerals aspect of it. And so this cool cheat code um, helps you kind of understand why um, the chords all fit in a key. And it gives you some fun creative tools. And by fun creative tools, I mean it gives you um, the option to make some music. For example, let's say we want to figure out the chords in the key of D major. So we go D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then we go back to D. So we've got this little formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Um, for this video, I'm going to assume that you have or will watch my video about how to make a major scale. Um, kind of cool. So we've got a D major scale, which we could go D, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, yeah, so we've got this new key of D major here. And what I can do actually is I can lay out the key of D major, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. That's like a lot of notes there. So we could play a D major scale here. Kind of cool, right? So um, here I'm just playing what I'm going to call now the one chord because it's the chord based on the first note of the scale. So because we're using a D major scale, we can now figure out all the chords in the key of D major. So starting on the one chord here, I'm actually going to switch these from, from notes to chords real quick. So erase, erase, erase. And then let's think of, okay, so this is major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. Diminished is a little circle. Um, it, it's a little circle if it's a triad 
or what's called a fully diminished chord. You put a little slash through it if it's a half diminished chord. Uh, we don't need to quite get into that today, but we can. So, um, so we got the one chord here, D, F sharp, and A. We've got the two chord, which is E, G, and B, but we can just find E's, G's, and B's anywhere they're accessible. Then we've got the three chord, which is an F sharp minor, which is F, A, F sharp, A, and C sharp. Did I say F minor? I meant F sharp minor. And then we've got a G major. That is the four chord in the key of D. And then we've got the five chord, which is A major. And then we've got B, B minor, which is B, D, and F sharp. And then we've got the uh, seven chord, which is this C sharp diminished. And then we're back to C major. I mean, excuse me, D major. <laughs> so chords in the key of D. So this kind of information is awesome because you can use it to make music. Um, chat, would you prefer, also, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. Um, I am just constantly overwhelmed by the amount of just gratefulness that I'm getting from you, and I, I really, really appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, maybe we should do, let's do one more scale, and then we'll talk about how to use this for fun. So, um, let's do, I don't know, let's do the key of F. So if we go F, and then we go whole step, whole step, half step, B flat, whole step, whole step, whole step, and then half step to get to F, but, so I'm just gonna let you assume that I wrote that scale right, and I'm not gonna write in the whole steps and half steps, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert these to chords now, so, uh, B major, C major, D minor, E diminished, so you might be saying, um, you know, wait, I forgot how to figure out these chords. So let's actually do it backwards one more time. F, G, A, B, C, D, E. So whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. I like making a little circle. As long as you move through the circle this direction, um, it makes it a lot easier because the start, the start note and the end note are kind of the same pretty awesome. Oh, thank you, Joshua. Also, I saw someone said they messaged me on Instagram. I'm so sorry. I pretty much never check. Uh, I, I don't really use Instagram. I should probably get rid of it. But FG, so, okay, I f oh, you caught me. I forgot to flat my B here, right? Because A, here, check this out. Um, I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit. So, a to B is a whole step. So if we're going to travel a half step from A, we have to move a half step to B flat. Kind of interesting. So let me go back to the iPad here. Yep, B flat. You got it, Ryan. Um, so check this out. This is kind of a cool thing to think about. G, B flat, and D is, that's a G minor chord. G, B flat, and D. And it's a G minor chord because we're moving a minor third from G to B flat, and we're moving a major third from B flat to D. Um, and just to compare, if you remember, G, B, D is a major chord, a major triad, and the little thing here is reversed. So in other words, let's zoom in here. A G major chord is G, B, and D. A G minor chord is G, B flat, D. Kind of cool, right? So, um, those are the essentials of chords in a key, but I think what we should do now, well, let me know what you think. Should we, yeah, Jack, sorry about that. 
Should we, um, email me instead, Jack. Uh, should we write some music with this knowledge that we've just learned? Um, or do you have any questions about this stuff? Let's see. I think, let's see. Yeah, let's write some music. Let's do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this button. I'm gonna sneak over here. And we got the iPad ready there. And I'm actually going to set up a, uh, let's see, I'm gonna set up a little, we'll just quickly write some music. Um, and so someone earlier, I'm sorry I forgot your name, I'm, a, I'm sort of dizzied by the, the number of people watching. Thank you so much for being here. But um, I wanna write some music real quick just to kind of show that you can. So this, let's see, this is a little recording software. I'm actually gonna pull out a, uh, a little MIDI controller here. And what I've done in my software is I've, I've picked a drum kit. I've got a lot of choices here. You can see, uh, let's see. Wow, I don't know. I might have to switch to my nice headphones to really hear this. Let's just use Brooklyn. This is a nice drum kit. So I'm gonna quickly throw together a little beat here and I'm gonna show you how using music theory can just be so, so helpful and so fun when you're writing music. Let's see, what, what kind of beat is this? Let's find a good tempo. Okay, 90, I like 90. Two, three, four. Let's see. Uh, I think I'm gonna straighten that out a little bit. I don't know if I... Yeah, let's do it straight, that's fine. So what I just did here, this is um, MIDI instruments, if you're not familiar. MIDI instruments are crazy because they don't get recorded the way that regular audio gets recorded. So I can record something with MIDI, quote unquote, and then I can edit. So maybe I don't want this beat anymore. I could just get rid of it. There we go, that's a nice beat, keep it simple. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab an audio track here. I'm gonna call it guitar. And let's see, I think I've got this little guitar here. Toilet paper, thanks for being here, sorry you gotta go. So, uh, oh, it's not a good idea to put the strap on my guitar when I have a lapel microphone, so I will not do that. Okay, so what do we got here? Um, yep, we're in tune enough for sort of a, a writing lesson here. So, oh, before we just dive in, let's pick a key. So what key do we wanna write some music in? I think what we wanna do is we wanna pick, let's go back to the notes here. Where did we? Oh, did I just, oh yeah, 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 okay. So let's pick, let's pick the key of F to write some music. So I'm actually gonna transfer this info over here. Um, let's see. So I didn't plan out exactly what I was gonna do today. So it's just kind of going, you know, we're just, we're just going for it. We're just doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer Oh, I'll have to hide this for a second. I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, what am I doing? I'm gonna make this bigger. There we go. So I'm gonna go key of F and then the chords, as we already figured out our F, um, F is the one chord, G minor is the two chord, uh, G A minor is the three chord, uh, and then we've got B flat is the four chord, C, is the five chord and D minor is the six chord and then E, uh, let's see, what button do I push? That's close enough, is the seven chord. There we go. So these are all the chords in the key of F. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this beat play and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to just find some, so let's see. 
let's just find something to play here. Although I should probably, hang on. Oop. You know what? This is why I like to buy used guitars. Cause you can bang them around and they're gonna be okay. Someone asked what this guitar is, by the way. It's a um, 1971 uh, Fender Music Master. It's a student model. It's a pretty cheap, pretty cheap, well, I mean, relatively cheap. Let me find a nice, uh, okay. I'm just trying to make sure I can get this loaded in right, there we go. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna grab a little software amp because it can be really fun to just write music quickly without worrying too much. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Um, it's a little more fun to write music for me to, to be able to write quickly without trying to spend a lot of time finding some tones. And now that I say that, I feel like I need more mids. There we go. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna noodle around with, we'll start with just some open chords. Um, man, that's a little too bright. That's kind of fun. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the one chord, F, then I'm going to the five chord, then I'm going to G minor, which is the, the two chord, and then I'm going to the four chord, which is B flat major. Um, yeah, that's kind of nice. So let's record that. Let me make sure that I've, I've got the right beat here. I think that'll work. That'll work. Let's try that. Yeah, so I'm gonna record that. I'll show you my, my hands here. Ooh, I like that. That's kind of fun. So this is, oh, let me turn that down or it's gonna buzz. This is why I think learning music theory is useful, is you can use it to make music. Of course, there's a lot more to it. Um, and I, over on my, my online school, which is hosted on Patreon, I've got so far about 150 videos and I do a live stream like this that is more centered on Q and A um, uh, every week. Every week I go live and I just field questions. Um, but basically, you know, maybe, let's see, let me give this a little listen, it's kind of nice. So I've got F, C, G minor, B flat major, F, C, G minor, and then it just stays. And then I did a little strummy thing, it's kind of fun. Um, so, let's see, I'm gonna field a couple questions here, and, uh, uh, let's see. So, Neftalem says, All, are the people on your, on the wall, your models? Well, they're people I really love. Over here, we've got, um, Paul McCartney, who, I, uh, I think the Beatles were kind of my first favorite band, and I, I love, um, I love the songwriting, I love the variety, I love the playfulness and combined with the seriousness. Um, over here, I've got uh, Chet Atkins, this guy, who um, was kind of the guy that that uh, first got me into, hang on a sec, first got me into finger picking, which is, uh, you know, what did he do? He did... Uh, I'm gonna mess it up. Yeah, I messed it up. I can't remember. I, I should have picked a different one, <laughs> but. <laughs> right, Chet Atkins did that kind of thing. But I didn't know until later that Mississippi John Hurt 
and um, people like Elizabeth Cotton um, kind of pioneered a lot of that style. Yeah, so cool name, one, two, three, asked a really important question. Uh, how did you determine which chords to use? So, other than using chords from the key of F, from there, there, uh, there's, there's, okay, so f there, there's a couple different ways to answer this question. The simplest way to answer this question is, I took whatever chords I wanted from the key of F that sounded nice. Um, from there, um, there's a lot of kind of things like modes and relative minor and things like that that can kind of muddy up some of the explanation, but the simplest thing is I just took whatever chords I wanted from the key of F and then tried to come up with something a little bit interesting. Um, one thing you might notice here is I played a chord progression um, from the first measure to, uh, to the start of the third measure, then I continued that chord progression, but I didn't play the last chord. And this is a little trick um, where uh, you can repeat something and then change it the second time around, and that sounds really nice. Phil James, the seventh chord is a half diminished chord. Yes. Um, Yeah, so uh, cool, cool name one two three. I hope that helps you uh, think about that. So let's see. Do you determine the key you are in by how many sharps there are in a chord progression? So um, there's kind of a lot of things to it. I don't um, actually. Okay, here's a cool thing to think about. Um, so let's see in the order of chords here, we have this interesting major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished kind of system. And when I'm looking at a chord progression, just really quickly, if I see two major chords next to each other in the alphabet, like G major and A major, or B flat major and C major, I can guess that those are probably the four and five chord. And if I see two minor chords next to each other, I can guess that those are probably the two and the three chord. When it comes to just figuring out what key a song is in, and sort of um, that can help you figure out what key you're in from there, whether it's just thinking about how the, the order of chords, to put it another way, this order of chords, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, um, can only fit in one key. So chances are, if you find those two major chords next to each other, not in the song, but in the alphabet, like D major and E major, that can be a really good hint that you're probably in the key of A major. But it takes a while to really get the hang of this stuff. Uh-oh, I'm sitting on my, my headphones thing. I can't hear. There we go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> True S. Armour says, how many guitars should I have? The answer is, as many as you want. Um, I find that I have uh, this guitar that I mainly like doing uh, like rhythm guitar kind of stuff. Um, I love rhythm guitar kind of stuff for this guitar. So it's got beefy flat wound strings on it and um, I'll turn that off again. And um, they're really thick, but I also have, um, I don't know, um, different guitars for, for different sounds. It kind of just depends on how many sounds you want to have. Um, yeah. Mason. Minor keys. Um, minor keys are pretty cool because every major scale is also a minor scale. Um, in other words, hang on a sec. Let me just scoot back over to this camera guitar. Uh, let, I'll take this iPad with me and we'll push the button, which is hopefully still working. It's had some issues. Hey, still working. So, um, let's just start with the key of C major because it's the easiest. So, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? And we got whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. 
right? So the cool thing about major keys and minor keys is if I play a C, well, actually, let's see, I'll play a C major scale here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, right? And we got whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Well, the cool thing about minor scales is every minor scale um, has a relative major scale that uses all the same notes. This is called relative major and relative minor. So if we look here and we go, the, the minor scale formula is actually whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. So a C major scale and an A minor scale contain all the same notes. And what this means is that um, the key of A minor actually contains all the same chords as well. We just call them different Roman numerals, which is kind of fun. So we've got the one chord, the two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, and we've got the six chord and the seven chord. Kind of cool. Um, there's some pretty awesome wonky stuff to think about trying to make the minor, uh, oh man, I, I don't know if I can go into that too much more today, but, um, there's some really cool stuff where you can take, where you can actually add a G sharp into your scale and you end up with a, um, you end up with what's called, uh oh, I'm all twisted up here. You end up with what's called a, um, a harmonic minor scale, or if you sharp the sixth and seventh notes of the scale, you end up with melodic minor, which gives you a bit more chords to choose from. That's the thing, that's the thing I wanna say about, um, uh, what am I trying to say? That's the thing about um, music theory that is really important to think about, and that is that music theory um, is not rules. It's not a list of this is what you have to do. Music theory is more like a history of what people have done so far and sort of a theory about why it works. But um, that doesn't mean you have to follow all that stuff. And people are constantly pioneering things that, um, that at least haven't been thought about in the same way, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, must read one says every major scale has a relative minor scale. Exactly. Um, did I forget the F? I, did, I yeah, thank you. I did forget the F. I better fix that. So, for those of you who are gonna watch this and be like, "What the heck?" I went a little too fast here, and I skipped F. I think it's because I'm uh kind of excited and nervous at the same time. But yeah, the F chord is the sixth chord. The seven chord is G. I just skipped F. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's getting hot in here. It's like 85 degrees in here right now. Um, let's see, yeah, th thanks for the reminder. Um, okay, what's another question here? Brandon says, I know my scales and triads on the piano, but I don't know how to start learning the chord shapes. Does it come naturally when you know where the notes are on the neck? Yeah, so, Brandon. In my opinion, this is why the caged system is such a big deal, is because music theory has awesome names for things. Like, okay, let's talk about, uh, let, let's just talk about inversions for a second. So, inversions are kind of cool um, in the sense that if you have a chord that is root, third, and fifth, like let's say C, E, G. That's great. Um, what if you want the E to be the lowest note? Well then, you've got this chord that's E, G, C, which is three, five, and root. And we would call this the first inversion. Now, this is awesome, but on piano, this makes a lot of sense, but on guitar, there's so many different places to play things, it can be really overwhelming. And um, so, hang on a sec here, let me, we're, we're going back. We're going right back to the camera guitar. Um, oops, I don't know what happened here, let's fix that, there we go. 
Thanks for joining me today, by the way. This is really fun. So, um, if I lay out a C, an E, and a G. Actually, I'm gonna zoom in. So, this is a C chord, right? C, E, and G. All you need to make a C chord is C, E, and G. The thing is, guitar, traditionally, when you're playing open strings, when you're playing chords, right, when you're strumming stuff, generally speaking, you're trying to hit as many strings as possible. And because of the kind of tradition of guitar, tradition, I don't know why I said that so weird, because of the tradition of playing guitar, people are often not aware of the specific notes they're playing. Um, and it's, it can be kind of overwhelming when someone says to play a C chord and you see, okay, do I play this C chord, this C chord? Do I play this C chord, this C chord? There are so many places to play C, uh, E, and G that it can be just crazy overwhelming to think about. So the awesome thing about the caged system is it takes these chord shapes that you already know, a C shape, an A shape, a G shape, which these are just the chords, right? This is a G chord, this is an E chord, and this is a D chord. And it's called the caged system for a cool reason. Most of you probably already know this, but it certainly helps. So to check this out, if I just lay out all the C's on the fingerboard, we get this really interesting pattern. Right? This is just all the C's you can find on the fingerboard. I'm not going to go all the way to the top. But if I throw down a C sharp, wait a second, you see, huh, weird, same, exact same pattern, which really makes sense, right? If I throw down a D, again, exact same pattern. You cannot escape this pattern. This is just how the, all of the octaves of these notes lay out on the guitar. Well, what happens if I throw down a C, an E, and a G? Well, it just so happens that I can play a C-shaped C chord here. I can play an A-shaped C chord here. I can play a G-shaped C chord here. I can play an E-shaped C chord here. I can play a, a D-shaped C chord here, and then I'm back to a C shape. And then I'm playing another A shape and another G shape. So, um, where was I going with this? Basically, um, thinking about where to play chords on the guitar and what to call them in particular, because there are so many ways to play a C major chord, um, using the caged system at least helps you um, think of a specific shape. For example, if I was gonna say, play an E-shaped C chord using just the bottom four strings, well then, Okay, here's a E shaped C chord using the bottom four strings. There's no other option for that. Does that kind of make sense? Um, the, it, the cage system is just a nice language to use around guitar specific things. Part of the reason why guitar is so freaking weird is because here's an E right here. Well, that exact same note is on the fifth fret of the B string. It's also on the ninth fret of the G string. It's also on the 14th fret of the D string. It's also, <laughs> right, so there's five different places to play the exact same note, and it can get really overwhelming. Also, I just realized when I'm in this mode over here, I can't see any of your questions, so I apologize if you did, if you had like a follow-up question there and I missed it. But, um, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, hopefully that's a lot to think about. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so I kind of lost track of time here. Um, and I should, uh, wow. I don't know how long I've been live. Someone want to, <laughs> how long have I been live? This is kind of cool. Um, I am going to mute this button here. And I'm just going to double check some stuff here um, in the background, make sure everything's working okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate that. Let's see. Uh, so, 
uh, I hope I'm not horribly mispronouncing your name, but Anish Anand says, any way to find the chord progression of a song? You know, that's a great question. On my, um, on my Patreon right now, I'm working on an ear training series. Um, I'm about to release the second video, so I'm pretty early in the series, but I'm trying to teach people um, how to get started with ear training. And part of, part of asking if there's any way to find the chord progression of a song, part of what makes that such a tricky question is um, it's, it's a little bit like saying, um, uh, can you teach me how to write poetry in a language that I don't speak? Um, it's like, wow, not only do you need to learn that language, but then you need to learn how to write poetry in that language. So music theory is sort of the language we use to talk about stuff. And in my opinion, having words for things is literally the way that you think about it, right? Um, imagine if every time you talked about a, th uh, well, like how annoying would it be if it would if it was like, oh man, the chain broke on my thing with a frame that has two wheels and a pedal crank thing and a handlebar to hold on to. It's like, you mean a bicycle? Just use the word bicycle. Music theory helps you <laughs> find words like bicycle so you don't have to describe every aspect of the thing every time. Um, and when the way that applies to sort of learning to hear the chord progression of a song is that the more music theory you learn, the more ear training you do, the more that stuff's going to kind of fall into place and make sense for you. So let's see. Uh, basically, there are so many questions right now that I'm just going to keep answering the first ones I see here. So Tony says, Tony Nezovich says, any tips on how to make my bar chord sound better? I still have some trouble with the buzzy B string while playing major on sixth string and putting all the fingers with major on the A string. Um, Let's see, the buzzy B string while playing major on the sixth string and putting all the fingers with the major on the A string. I'm not entirely sure um, what you're talking about, but what I will say is, I'm gonna do a little zoom in here. I do have a whole lesson about bar chords, um, but let me give you a couple tips to think about with bar chords. So first of all, um, actually, hang on, let me switch back to this mode. First of all, this is going to be funny. I got to shrink down. So <laughs> for starters, you want to make sure that you're not sitting on a chair that's too tall and you want to make sure that your neck isn't far down. So the higher the neck is, the easier it's going to be to form a bar chord. And normally I would put a strap on, but if you're trying to play bar chords down here, that's going to be much more difficult than trying to play bar chords up here. So get a strap or something so you can hold your guitar up a little higher. That's one tip that will pretty much always get you better bar chords. Um, the other thing is, let's see if I can get this camera in the right spot, is your finger. A lot of people try to, um, oh, let's see. Oh, I don't have any volume. Hang on a sec. Switching things around. There we go. So, heck yeah, father beer. So basically for bar chords, um, one thing to think about is with this E string, uh, meaning you're rooting on the low E string here, it's nice to think, how do I find where I can just fret these two strings nicely with my first finger and then cool. So find the, find the spot on your finger where you can fret those two strings nicely and then put the rest of your fingers down and then with whatever index finger you have left over, just plop that down up there. Um, that's a great question. And then um, for these A-shaped chords, I tend to either bar both of these strings down here with just my first finger and then I fret these three with just... Um, the joint of my third finger here. And I actually will, uh, I'm not even gonna worry about this high E string because I've got a root, a fifth, a root, and a third. I don't need that extra string. So I actually play this by just trying to mute this high E string with my third finger. Okay, so that's a quick one, but I've got a whole, a whole lesson on YouTube about bar chords. 
Um, Mike, uh, Michelle or Michael, can I watch this later? Yes, you can. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Uh, Anish, I hope I'm saying that right. Is it easier to play electric guitar than acoustic? Generally speaking, um, electric guitar is easier to fret because the strings tend to be lighter. But my advice for people is to always pick the instrument that you're the most excited to play, period. Um, for any beginners here, if you're trying to figure out what's the best this to do, what should I start with first, what's this thing to do, this famous person told me this, you want to start with what you're most excited to do because the most important thing to do as a beginner is to be excited to play guitar every day. So, I mean, I've had people go as far as to say, I want to learn guitar. Should I learn piano first? It's like, no, you want to learn guitar. Learn guitar. And that mindset of, should I do this thing that kind of sucks before I do the fun thing? Um, it, in my opinion, that's not going to work out for you. What seems like a better option, generally speaking, is, um, is to let the things that you're excited about pull you forward and motivate you and then fill in the gaps of what you don't know and what you think you should know to reach your goal. So always have your goals pull you along instead of pushing yourself with kind of the boring stuff to, to kind of save your goal for later. And that's true for writing music as well. I don't know if I can say this strongly enough, but I'm going to say it in this ridiculous camera here. I'm going to say, if you want to write music, there's no reason to wait. Start now. You don't have to write full songs, but, okay, that's probably a little too intense, but what I'm trying to say is, if you want to write music and your goal is to write music, there isn't going to be some magical point you get to in your guitar playing where you're like, I can suddenly write music now. It's not a magical thing. It's a thing that takes practice just like learning guitar. Um, and, you know, to plug my Patreon again, um, what I'm trying to focus on mainly on my Patreon is getting people to be creative and be excited and be curious about making music. And that doesn't mean that my patrons are all going to be, you know, singer songwriters. It might be that you find that you really enjoy creating parts and now you're a great lead guitar player or rhythm guitar player for a band. It might be you love writing chord progressions and things and you bring basically the song seeds to your band to fill those out. Or it might be you want to be a singer songwriter and you want to do all those parts yourself. Um, my Patreon, generally speaking, my online school that's on Patreon, I want to clarify that, um, is it's a, it's a good place to start if that sounds fun for you. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, <laughs> Tom says, I thought you and Adam H. Johnson were the same person for the longest time. I don't even know who that is. Um, Amber, she, how would you recommend embellishing chords for rhythm guitar? So, uh, part of... Part of embellishing, uh, where I have a pick somewhere, well, I don't need it. Part of embellishing chords comes from knowing the embellishments you can do on each chord. For example, um, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. I don't want to give away the whole farm today, but I can do a little bit here. So, um, let's talk about chords in the key of C, right? So C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, a minor, B, half diminished, and C. Um, those are all the basic triads in the key of C, but you can also do major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, um, dominant seven, <laughs> spaced out for a second, and then we've got minor seven, and then we've got half diminished, and then we're back um, to major seven. There are a lot of things you can do um, two chords if you know what to do for a one chord or a two chord or a three chord there are things you can do for example if i play a basic chord progression that is c a minor d minor and g major right these are basic triads and if you want to make those fancier you could go uh
Um, <laughs> it, uh, basically what I did is I added some sevens, I added some nines, and there are specific sevens and nines that you could put for each, you know, the one chord has, can be a major seven chord. The four chord can be a major seven. The five chord can be dominant seven. There's all kinds of things you can do along those same lines. Um, yeah, so, nice. We've got, uh, okay, so, uh, Louis or Luis says, can anyone learn to sing? Essentially, yes. I think there are very, very rare cases where people are clinically tone deaf, but most people who think they're tone deaf, um, need to basically need to learn, um, how to match a pitch. And, ooh, um, I th a lot of people have baggage from growing up um, that is really sad to me. It's, it's, um, I've had many uh, adult students who have said, I didn't think I was musical because so-and-so from my upbringing told me that I was garbage at it and I believed them. And that, just, that kind of thing makes me really sad. So in a nutshell, I think, yes, everyone can learn to sing. Um, but it might be harder for some people than others. Actually, the lead singer of my band, uh, Hot Bodies in Motion, he thought he was tone deaf. And in high school, he... Uh, let's see. I think he joined a jazz choir. And every day after class, the teacher had to sit with him and like teach him how to match a pitch. And now he's the lead singer of a band... His voice has been in, in a movie and some TV shows. Like, you know, I think it, he learned how to do it. It's kind of cool. Um, Aquistinian the Legend, can you explain your music studio setup? Well, essentially, I've got my camera guitar up here. I've got my sort of A camera, my B camera. I've got my iPad. And then I've got also a, a way to share my computer screen. Um, I don't know if I want to go into too much detail because some of the stuff involved in my camera guitar is kind of proprietary, secret, sneaky stuff. Um, yeah. Jordan Broderick, how to drop passing chords in your chord progression. Um, I, I think the amount of explanation I would have to do to do that justice, um, means that I probably shouldn't answer that here, but that is a great question. Um, yeah. So, okay. Wow. Uh, so many awesome questions. Um, yeah. Oh, how do I switch between? I have a little, um, I have a little camera switcher here. Let me show you. Um, there you go. I've got a little camera switcher that lets me switch between different cameras. Um, kind of fun. Yeah. Let's see. Phil James, I enjoy using a DAW at the moment, currently using Reaper. Nice. Um, let's see. Well, I think whew, I should probably call it a day soon. But, um, but yeah, OBS software lets you do things like that. Um, what things should I learn if I want to start applying theory to solos? So, uh, learning to solo is, um, there are a lot of elements, but part of it has to do with starting to listen for the chord progression and know what notes are part of the current chord happening right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff involved, but let's see. Um, any relative minor memory trick you can share? Well, the root note of the relative minor is always a half step and a whole step behind the root note. In other words, if you're in if you're in the key of A major and you find that root note, you go back a half step and a whole step and that is the minor, the relative minor root note. Adi says, any tips on how to add a melody to chords in a key? When I try, it just doesn't sound melodic. Um, I gotta say, whew, that's, uh, that's something that 
people ask about surprisingly often because they've heard people do stuff like like that kind of thing. It takes a surprising amount of practice to get the hang of that kind of thing. And so I would say just don't beat yourself up if it's really hard for you because it's a hard thing to do. And part of, um, part of I guess, the way to practice doing that would be to just kind of do that kind of thing all the time. Um, okay, so um, I should probably wrap up soon, otherwise I might be here for like eight hours. But uh, yeah, I really appreciate everyone stopping by to hang out. And I would like to let you know that um, if you are curious about how to actually use music theory to be creative and make, make music, whether that's writing your own songs or just learning to participate with other bandmates, um, I would seriously consider, you know, if I were you, I would seriously consider checking out my online school, which is hosted on Patreon. Um, I think you'd really like it. Um, and again, I do a live stream like this once a week where I field questions and, um, it's pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, I might do this more often. If more often means more than once, yes, I haven't really figured it out. But, um, yeah, I really appreciate you all being here. And I think, I think, let's see. Oh, uh, Aquistinian the Legend says, does your online school help with home music studio setup and recording? Um, I do have some lessons about how to use GarageBand, um, which kind of applies to many different uh, DAWs, digital audio workstations. And that teaches you how to set gain levels, how to, um, how to use a microphone, how to kind of use an audio interface. So the basics of recording at home, for sure, I cover. But yeah, um, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, and I think I'm going to call it a day. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your week, I guess. And uh, take care, everybody. This was a lot of fun, and maybe I will do it again. Um, I don't know. I got to think about it. All right. Take care, everybody.